I'm excited about the talk today. I think there's great application to everybody who's here. And I think if you'll zone in with me, by the end of the message, you are going to know some things that are going to help you move to the next level, move to the next stage of your life. So whether you're a churchgoer or not a churchgoer, whether you're a believer or not a believer, listen, you just try your best to listen. And if you open your heart just a little bit, I think you're going to learn some things that are going to be very, very helpful. I'm going to begin with a scripture that uh, many of you are familiar with from the Bible. If not from the Bible, you at least remember it from a song the mamas and the papas sang a long, long time ago. But uh, the scripture is from Ecclesiastes, and it goes like this. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. There's a time to be born and a time to die. There's a time to plant, and there's a time to uproot. There's a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh and a time to mourn and a time to dance. There's a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. There's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. There's a time to search and there's a time to give up. There's a time to keep and a time to throw away. There's a time to tear and a time to mend. There's a time to be silent and there's a time to speak. There's a time to love and there's a time to hate. There's a time for war and there is a time for peace. I want to talk to you today about changing seasons, but maybe not like you're thinking. I think all of us love the beauty of changing seasons. I know I used to have a Harley Davidson back when I was a young man. And Jane and I loved the fall when she would get on the back of my bike and we would head to the mountains. That was a sweet, sweet time. Or now we sleep with the window open in our bedroom, this time of year especially. And it's wonderful when, I know some of y'all get cold real easy. We like it to just cold, cold, cold. But you're bundled up and when you first begin to wake up and you can see your breath. Anybody else like that? Anybody else? I love that too. That's, that's the way to sleep. Some of y'all like it 90 degrees. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. We like to do that. Or the crisp first days of winter. You know what I'm talking about? When it's kind of bone chilling cold. You just think, this is unbelievably cold. This is maybe the coldest I have ever been in my life. But there's something beautiful about that. And then all of us like spring. My street is a, is a lovely street and there are dogwoods on both sides. And in spring, the dogwoods just begin to bloom and it is gorgeous. People begin to thaw out just a little bit. They pull out their sandals and they start wearing their shorts and they're just excited that it's not as cold as it was. Then of course, good old summer when you want to head to a pool or to a beach and you want to read a good book as the sun shines down on your face. We all experience seasons and we experience nature's seasons together. But just like we experience nature's changing seasons, we also experience what I call soul seasons. And the difference with soul seasons is we all can be experiencing a different season than the person who is seated right next to us. As a young communicator many, many years ago when I was just starting out, I thought everyone was right where I was. If I was doing great, I just assumed everybody was doing great and so I would talk to them like everybody was on the top of the mountain. If I was in the valley, I just thought everybody was in the valley and I talked to people just like they were where I was. It was a lesson I learned about 25 years ago that that wasn't the case. It's a big mistake that we make, especially in church, in our understanding of believing everybody should be at the same place. No, 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 no. On every row, you're going to find people in different seasons of their life, and that's okay. I believe in our service today, you're going to be able to discover which soul season you are primarily in. One season is going to stick out to most of you. Now, there may be somebody who says, you know what, I listen to that, and I'm not so sure. But I believe for most, you're going to say one soul season is sticking out for me right now. I think that might be the season that I'm in. Also, the season you're in does not follow an automatic pattern. You know, just like summer is then followed by autumn, and then autumn is followed by winter, and then winter is followed by spring. You could be in summer, 
And then just in a blink of an eye, you could be cast into winter. And we'll talk about that just a little bit. I want you to hear this message from two places. One, I want you to think about where you are right at this moment. And I want you to know God is with you in whatever season you're in. I want you to make sure you understand that. And I want you to know whatever season you're in, it can be a season of growth. In fact, it needs to become for you a season of growth. It's really the only place you can be right now. And God will use that to take you to the next level if you'll allow him. And secondly, I want you to begin to recognize seasons in other people's lives. That's empathy. And I believe that's one of the missing ingredients in this world. We have the inability to be empathetic with other people. I want you to be able to meet someone, hear their story, and begin to think, maybe, just maybe, I think they are in this season or that season. Instead of just blurting out what you're feeling based on where you are, I want you to be able to listen to where they are, then perhaps you will be able to be helpful to them. Again this morning, I want you to primarily discover the season you're in, and then I want you to be able to begin to notice seasons other people are in. I read again from our first verse, we read Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Let me give you the first season I want you to think about, and that's fall. And when I talk about the soul season of fall, I'm talking about a season of change and transition. Just as fall in nature is a time when summer has ended and the leaves begin to change color, and isn't that beautiful? The foliage is all red and it's yellow and it's gorgeous. So also is the fall season of the soul a time when we begin to feel personally a lot of change and transition in our lives, and we don't know exactly where it's leading. You ever had that experience? You're not where you were, but you don't know where you're going. You're kind of stuck in a place of transition. Think about a man or a woman recently divorced or widowed who's just settling into the reality that their life is going to be different. All they have known is this, and now this isn't life anymore. And they know that's going to be where they're going to be, but they don't know yet how to get there. Or a person who feels his career is about to change, but he's waiting for the door to open for his new position. He doesn't yet know where the new position is. Something has shifted, but you're not sure where it is leading you. Autumn or fall can be a time of high anxiety. I know. I have just finished a pretty long period of fall. I knew that God had used me in a certain way to a point, but I also knew that he was shifting me around to some different activities, some different things to be involved in. I didn't exactly know what that was, but I knew I was growing restless here. And I didn't know exactly where I was supposed to be because this was not fitting me as it once had. Let me give you some things to remember if you're in fall, and I would imagine many of you are in fall. You say, Ray, you've just described me. That's me. That's exactly me. I don't know where I'm going right now. I'm just, I'm not sad. I'm not depressed. I'm not in a dark, dreary place. I just don't know where I'm going. You're in fall. Here's three things that I need to hang on to. There are three things that change. When everything's around me changing, three things don't change, and this will help you get through. Number one, God's love never changes. I have to hang on to that. God's love never changes. Anybody here ever experienced fickle love? I sure have. You know what it's like. I love you more than anything in the world. I love you, and I'll be there for you always. You can count on me forever. I don't love you anymore. Anybody experience that? It's horrible, isn't it? That's the way human love is, but God's love is different. God's love is constant. He is 100% loving all the time. Well, what about when I'm bad? He still loves you. What about when I do something that I'm ashamed of? He still loves you. What about when I do something that I know is hurtful to people? He still loves you. He knows you. He loves you. And he has never been anything but love to you. God's love never changes. The psalmist said it like this, your love never changes. Repeat after me, please, in full voice. God loves me. God loves me. He has always loved me. He has always loved me. 
Y'all, I have to remind myself of that when I don't know what's happening. I don't know where I'm going. I know I'm, I'm restless here, but I don't know where there is. And things are changing. I have to say one thing I know. God, your love never changes. Another thing I hang on to is God's focus never changes. God's focus in our lives never changes. He's focused on two things. He focuses on us growing in our understanding of his goodness. I really believe that's the key to why you are here today is every week we want to just hammer home God's goodness is unmeasurable. It is the most amazing thing in the world. What you have learned that had anything to do with shame and and separation, those things were not what God's Word teaches. God's Word teaches love. And everything we want to do is to make you more aware of God's goodness in every way. So that's a focus he wants us to have. Realize how good he is. Wake up in the morning and say, God, I know you're for me, not against me. I know that. And the second thing that God really wants for each of us is I believe he wants our hearts expanding in love for other people. And I don't know about you, but I have sensed that in my life over the last 10 years especially. I have sensed... And and since we have moved to Hapeville, I've just experienced God as I'm getting older, teaching me to love different people, more and more different people, and to really love them, to be empathetic with them, to not say, you've got to change and become like me before I love you, but to say, you know what? I love you right where you are. I love you. You don't have to change. You don't have to come to our church. You don't have to believe what I believe. You don't have to do any of those things. I just love you. That's what God's focus is for all of us. So when the world is shifting, the world is changing, I hang on to God's love never changes, and I hang on to the fact that God's focus in our lives never changes. Psalm 119 says this, long ago I learned from your statutes that you established them to last forever. And that's the heart of what God wants for us to know. A third thing that I hang on to is this, God's purpose for my life never changes. His purpose for my life never changes. He wants me to look at Jesus and see how Jesus was God in human flesh, and he wants me to realize I have the very same potential for God to dwell in me. That in this human body, there is the potential for me to be human and divine. It all comes together. Just like it came together in Jesus, it comes together in me, and it comes together in you. What are you going to do with it? So I hang on to those things. I'm in fall. I don't know exactly where I'm going to go, but I do know these things. I know God's love never changes. His focus never changes. His purpose for my life never changes. Psalm 33 says, but the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations, those things I know. Think about it. Are you in fall? Make a little mental note if you are. Let me get, take you to the next season, and that's the season of winter. This is one that you really know. If you're in winter, for the most part, you will know it. Winter is a season of sadness and isolation. It is a season of sadness and isolation. Life is full of losses, isn't it? It's sobering when you think about the fact that absolutely nothing around you is permanent. We want it to be, but nothing around us is permanent. You'll go through seasons of tragedy, You'll go through seasons of grief. You'll go through seasons of loss where you have a disaster that takes away something that is very precious and important to you. You can lose your finances. You can lose your job. You can lose your health. You can lose your marriage. You can lose your children. And one thing that is inevitable for all of us, you will lose loved ones in this life that you care about. But in this life, all of us will be touched by death. You may not be in a season of loss right now, But your time is coming. It comes for all of us. It is a part of life. Jesus said it like this in John 6, 33, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart. I've overcome the world. You can overcome as well. So what do you do if you find yourself in winter? I want you to know there are some things I want you to remember. The first thing I want you to remember is this. You need to mourn your loss. Don't speed up that process. Don't try to get to the other side and find spring too quickly. It's okay to mourn your loss. That's the first step on the road to recovery. Tragedy always produces strong emotions. Loss, anger, fear, depression, 
worry, sometimes even guilt. These feelings are scary to us and we don't know what to do with them. When you've had a major loss, you've been handed a pink slip or someone in your immediate family is all of a sudden taken away and they're not there anymore. We have enormous feelings that bubble up within us. And if we don't deal with it now, we'll deal with it later because you can press it down all you want. You can put a big smile on your face and say, I'm, I'm great, I'm great, trust me, Ray, I'm great. You're not great if you haven't grieved your loss. And if someone tries to speed up that process to you, tries to get you on the other side too quickly, it's been two months, then just know they don't have wisdom. It's okay to grieve. Sadly, when people don't grieve, that's why 30 years later, they're still struggling with the emotional stress from the losses that occurred 20 or 30 years before. There's even a myth that goes around that says, God wants me to walk around with a smile on my face all the time. Can I tell you that? Something that is the farthest thing from the truth. When someone goes to a funeral and they don't feel a lump in their throat and a tear in their eye, I worry about them. Yes, we believe in heaven. Yes, we believe there'll be a place we'll all gather again. But it is sad when someone is taken away right now and we know they're not going to be around tomorrow. It's important. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn. It's okay to mourn. Those who mourn will be comforted. The Psalms are all about people crying out to God. That's why they're so honest. They're not saying everything is great. We're just happy, happy, happy all the time. They're saying life is killing us. It's tough. We feel so alone right now. The psalmist said it like this in Psalm 62, pour out your heart to God for he is our refuge. Then Psalm 34 said this, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are, I love this term, crushed in spirit, crushed in spirit. Well, a couple of things I try to remember when I'm in the winter and I want you to remember this too. In winter, you must remember to not try to survive it alone. Have some people around you they don't have to have great wisdom. They don't have to talk. Just some people who can let you know that they're with you, walking with you through this sad time, this sad season. It's often difficult for us to feel like we have a right to do that, but the Bible is clear. Galatians, Paul said, carry each other's burdens. I don't try to act like I have any great wisdom when someone's lost someone. I just say, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. And then I just try to be in their space just a little bit, just be in their space, not to give them wisdom, not to think that I know how to help them because somebody's just left them and they're, they're devastated because of a divorce or because of a loss of someone close to them. I don't think I have any great wisdom, but I know my presence is what they will remember. And so I try to offer that to people who are going through something like this. When you're going through a season of loss, you're going to need some people. That's one of the reasons, by the way, we talk about small groups in our church, and that's one of the reasons we have small groups. Because if you're in a small group, which meets usually every other week at our church, where you go to someone's home and it's 5, 10, 15 people that get together, when you experience a loss and you are in a group, those people know to, to try to be around you when you're in winter, to try to love you. When you don't even know what you're saying sometimes at a small group, you just say, I, I, I'm just crying. I don't know why I'm crying. They, they get it. It's okay to, to be there with those people. Here's something else about winter. In winter, you must remember that eventually it is supposed to end. Winter eventually is supposed to end. If it's freezing cold in July in Atlanta, we know something is amiss because July's hot. So if you have been in winter for years, then maybe some things need to shift a little bit for you. Now, some people, let me, let me say it like this. Some people, they, they are more comfortable in what they know than what they don't know. They get so comfortable here in maybe even a bad spot, a, a sad spot. They don't know how to move beyond that. You want to make sure that's not you. You want to make sure that you say, God, I know I've been grieving. I know this is heavy. I know this is, I can't push myself through this, but just know I want to move to the next place. And I don't know how long it's going to be for you, but if it's two or three years down the road, then maybe that's, that's getting to the place where you maybe need to talk to somebody who can give you some serious direction here. Something else about winter, you must remember it's not supposed to kill you. 
Winters are not supposed to kill you. It's a place where God is found for sure. It's a place where you look back and you say, wow, I learned some things that I did not know. I experienced some growth I never thought I could ever experience. But it's not supposed to kill you. And if you feel like you're going to check out because you're in winter, then please, please go see a doctor. Go see a counselor. See somebody that can talk to you because winters are not supposed to kill you. It's a difficult time we all go through. It's a season that you have to go through, but it's not supposed to kill you. Very, very important. All right. Think about it. Anybody here in winter, just kind of follow it away. I'm in winter. That's where I'm at. That's where I am. Third, third season is the season of spring. I like the season of spring. We all like the season of spring. It's the season of new beginnings. I love seeing folks as they move into this phase. You know what I'm talking about. Two people sensing God leading them into a love relationship. I love when you see that at church. You kind of see people just in that early stage and it's like, we don't know exactly where it's going, but we feel like it's just for us to be together. What a great thing. Or someone who finally has landed that job they have been thinking about it and dreaming about and praying about and going to all the interviews and they finally land it and they know that they're starting something brand new. Or maybe moving into a new house. There's something that is happening that you say, this is beautiful. I don't know exactly what it's like, but I know where I'm going now. I know where I'm going. There is a little problem though, and that's most of us don't like change. We're a little uncomfortable with change. It makes us a little bit afraid. So let me say this to all of you. Remember the scripture. Paul said this, and it's so true. God did not give us a spirit of timidity or a spirit of fear. He gives us a spirit of power. He gives us a spirit of love. He gives us a spirit of self-discipline, but not of fear. So when you're walking into that new place, no, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. Here's a couple of things to remember if you're in spring. It can be a challenge to truly embrace the new. It can be a challenge to truly embrace the new. We pride ourselves on being fresh and cutting edge, and then when we have an opportunity to move into something brand new. A lot of times we say, whoa, whoa. Want to make sure that we say, you know what, God, I'm walking in somewhere new. I've never been here before, but I'm excited. I'm walking with you and I'm trusting you. And this is going to be wonderful because I'm learning things I've never known before. Let me tell you a little bit about my story. I told you I was in autumn or fall. It's like I was beginning to really tire of being the church administrator, kind of the point person for everything of the church. Jane and I were saying, you know, we've done this. I've done it now for a long, long, long time. And I was just kind of thinking, this doesn't, I don't feel like I'm thriving right now. I had Jeff pulling on my coattail all the time saying, hey, you need me to help you? No, 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 don't worry about it. No, just heal. And so I kept thinking, what is it? What is it? Uh, Ray, I can help you. Yeah, not, not right now. I know you're just healing right now. And I kept thinking, what's going on? Well, then I finally, Jeff and I had a serious conversation a month or two ago, and I finally realized he was at a place where he wanted to help. He wanted to take some administration of some of the load off. And suddenly when I said, yes, Jeff, will you do that? Suddenly I began to feel this incredible sense of this is where God is leading me. These are the things I'm supposed to do. This is how I'm supposed to spend my time. These are the people I'm supposed to touch. This is the love I'm supposed to share. This is the kind of thing I'm supposed to. It has been a spring awakening. Jane and I laid in the bed last night. We talked about that very thing. He said, you know, do you just sense that God is doing something brilliant? Jeff is moving here. I am moving here. God is doing some things. We're all a part of the village family, but we're going to be doing what we're the best at. And we just laid in bed and we said, yes, this is beautiful. That's what it means to move into the spring. Another thing about spring is it's easy to get so caught up in the excitement of the new thing that you forget God. So you want to make sure you don't do that. I have seen people who've gotten so caught up in the new house or the new job or the new uh, role they're playing or whatever, the new relationship, that suddenly God is a, a way out of their minds. Uh, make sure as best you can you, you remember who is the one who holds it all together. Who is the one who is the very air that we breathe? Who is the one that loves you always? Don't forget God. The fourth season is the summer season. And the summer is a season of joy and celebration. It's that time in life when you just say, everything feels great. 
I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I feel like I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. My relationships are right. My health is good. My friendships are in place. And can I tell you something? If you're there, don't be ashamed of it. You won't be there forever, but if you're there right now, celebrate that. It's huge. Growing up, summer for many of us meant play. It meant picnics or going to the pool or to the beach. It meant vacations and fun. When you're in the season of the soul and it's summertime, let it be a place of play. Let it be a place of true joy. Summer is a soul season we can easily miss. We can be so work acclimated that we say, I don't have time. No, when things are great, when things are great, there are three keys you need to embrace fully for summer to be all it's supposed to be. That's recreation, celebration, and gratitude. Just do it. Just celebrate it. Just be grateful. God, I'm happier right now than I've ever been in my whole life. Thank you for this place I'm in right this minute. And celebrate it. It's good to be there. And we'll celebrate with you. The Bible says we're supposed to weep with those who weep and we're supposed to celebrate with those who celebrate. We will do that. If you're in summer, we'll shout with you. We'll say, yes, we're so happy. But in turn, when you go through a winter season, we'll cry with you too. That's what it's like. Well, here's what I want to do. I want us to close by each of us thinking which season we are primarily in. If you can do that, some people may say, you know, I just feel dull. Well, I get that too. Maybe, maybe it's winter, maybe it's just a dull winter, but just maybe some people might have a difficulty, but for most of us, you know which season you're in. I wanna say a quick prayer for each season, and then Rachel is gonna close us with a song that, is, that nails this talk. In fact, this talk came out of me hearing this song 20 something years ago. That's where this talk came from. So right now, I just want to ask, if you all bow your heads, I'm just going to ask you individually, if you feel like you're in the fall season of transition, you don't know where you're going yet, but you know you're kind of finished where you were, would you do me a favor and just look up at me if you just feel like fall is where you are? I see you. I see you. I see all over this place, fall season. That's, I've just gotten out of fall. I know exactly what you're talking about. I see you. I understand fall is a real place to be. You don't know where you're going, but you know you've left where you were. I see you. Would you do me a favor? Just bow your heads and let me pray for you, all right? Father, I thank you for every person who said that they're in fall because you're in fall with them. You, you, you are leading them to a new place. They don't know where it is yet, but they're anxious to go. And they just want more than anything to to hang on to the truth that while other things are changing, you don't change. And you'll hold their hand and you'll walk with them into a future more beautiful than they could ever imagine. And they can trust you right now in the fall season they are in. Thank you, Lord. Now, I'm going to ask if you might be in the winter season, if you would just lift your eyes. That's that season where you say, thank you. That's where you say, you know what? Things have kind of died around me. I just sense it's just lonely around me. It's kind of bleak around me. I just don't know what my next step is because I just feel as close to dead as I could be right now. I see you. I see you. Anybody else, I see you. You just say, I'm in winter, I'm in winter. I feel depressed, I believe I'm in winter. Let me pray for you, okay? Father, this is the most painful place for us to be. But I really believe that you're with us in the winter. And I really believe one day we look back on winter and we see how we have grown and how the pieces have come together for us and how we've become stronger people because we've weathered the winter season. When you were there, sometimes you were carrying us. We didn't even know how we were making the next step, but you carried us. Thank you for that presence in the winter season. Now I want to ask you if you're in the spring, you kind of know where you're heading and you're excited about it. Anybody here just raise your eyes and say, you know what, I think I'm in the spring. I think I'm in the spring. I see you. I see you. 
What a cool season to be in. I see you. I see you. It's cool to be there. I see you. I see you. I see you. What a cool place. I, I just, the sun is out and things are great. I don't know everything about where I'm going, but I'm pretty sure I know the direction. Lord, we thank you for the soul season of spring. We thank you for the joy in people's hearts as they see what they couldn't see. Maybe just a few months ago, they couldn't see it, but now they see it. And it's beautiful. And they're excited about walking into that new season with you. They're so excited about what's going to happen. And they're willing to walk it with you. One final season, and that's the summer season. If you're in summer and you just say, you know what, Ray, I, I feel really wonderful about where things are. Would you lift your eyes and let me just see your eyes? I see sometimes that's the hardest one to own because you feel guilty about it, but it's beautiful if you're there. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great season to be in. Father, we all aren't there at the same time, but we love it when we are there. Thank you for the summer season. Now, Father, I pray wherever we are, we would find you and we would realize that's what's going to get us through to the next level as you teach us what we need to know as we grow up and become stronger. And we thank you for never leaving us, whatever season we're in. And we pray this in Christ's name.